Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Here's my website, my Patreon, my Instagram. Like my videos and subscribe to my channel. If this content is entertaining for you, it helps me out when you do that. Today we're going to talk about, hey, you should buy a nylon string guitar. Here's why. If just like with amps, everybody is trying to get you know, five watts is the new 100. Everybody's trying to get quieter and quieter because we're acknowledging that like, oh, I'm not going to play Madison Square Garden. Um, that, that, you know, the nylon string guitar is the equivalent of that to other guitars. This thing is the quietest, purest way to get guitar sound. Uh-oh, uh-oh, gotta play Radiohead now. And, and so, you know, I know who my audience is. Thank you for being my audience. Mostly adults. Mostly adults who, who play a lot when, you know, there's other people in the house. So I know a lot of people practice with an electric guitar with headphones on. Um, they don't have the luxury to make a lot of noise. So, yeah, a nylon string is, you know, steel strings. I don't know statistically or, or uh, ratio-wise how much louder your steel string is than, than a nylon string, but it's louder. And a nylon... is a beautiful resonant way to, to um, yeah, to practice, uh, to, yeah, to play. Because it, it's funny, I don't know why it's not more common um, to play one of these. So, uh, first thing is it's quiet, and so what that means, sorry, I'm getting distracted, I can see my battery is going to die. Hold on! <laughs> So, where was I? I was talking about why quiet is good. Here's several reasons why quiet is good. If you're a songwriter and you're working on songs, I know that this has been very helpful for me working on my record because, I, you know, it's a lot harder to overpower your voice with this instrument. Um, and that's something I, I notice with my students who are playing electric or steel string guitar. They're trying to sing songs and, like, yeah, you're, you're, why are you working so hard to get louder than your guitar? Like, <laughs> you don't need to do that to yourself. And then, the next thing about it, these are so much easier on our fingers than our steel strings are. I could... I could play this thing all day and night, and I kind of do. It's my couch guitar. These nylon strings are just yet yeah, so so warm and mellow. Um, so the way I I was talking about this with my my uh, engineer producer friend Tom Canova, I was like, yeah, it's like having this is the guitar equivalent of like a small upright piano, just this mid rangey pleasant unobtrusive guitar sound that, you know, th if we want, and I'm such a purist, you know, there's, there's a Tweed Deluxe back there, like all my, I'm like, dude, what was the simplest version of the thing? And, you know, if we trace it back, I guess it's the lute, really, or someone can tell me what it is. Um, but obviously it's nylon string before steel string. Steel string only came around uh, for projection purposes, and since, every, like, everything now is not about that. <laughs> got worry about it and the answer is no we don't now some things to talk about with nylon strings yes the necks are very flat radius you know that that's the curvature so that's weird and yes the string spacing is greater but for people like me I think that's good to force us to be very precise with our, our finger placement and it's funny because my other main guitar is a Fender Mustang which is kind of the opposite so I'm always and you know I play them both a lot equally so I'm always um, 
challenging my hands and fingers to get used to the guitars that I, that I play. Which is also why I don't understand why people can have like hundreds of guitars. Because for me, I, I have to know the feel of each of my guitars. I can't, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't have hundreds. I have nine, I think, I have nine guitars. And that's including basses. Um, so if you're going to shop for one, um, you want to look for it. Nowadays they make, I know Cordoba and Godin both make what they call crossover or fusion nylon strings, which are nylon strings, but the, the, the neck heft is more similar to a steel string. Now this guitar I'll talk more about at the end is technically, it's, it's called a folk guitar. This is a 1962 Goya G10. And yeah, you can find one of these. They're not too terribly expensive. This is the Sound of Music guitar, by the way. You see Maria play this one in that movie, which I love that. Do, a deer, be man, deer, hey, a drop of golden sun, etc. Um, yeah, I'll talk more about this specific guitar and why it's special to me at the end. Now let's think about um, players who use nylon strings. Leonard Cohen, who I'm a big fan of, definitely nylon string, uh, famous blue raincoat. <laughs> see if I can play Avalanche today. Take a deep breath, calmly. Now I'm not classically trained. Um, but I have had this guitar my whole life, so I have medium okay classical technique. Let's see if I can play vaguely classical things on this. Yeah, so, oh, by the way, if you, yeah, great book for easy classical pieces. I think it's called 30 easy Spanish guitar solos. Yeah, just great purchase. Uh, I, yeah, that's, that's where that one's from. I think that's Ejercicio and E minor. You know, that's kind of Doors Spanish Caravan, but that's also Leyenda. Um, so I can play a little bit of classical-ish stuff. Uh, oh yeah, we're talking about players. Jonathan Richmond, Modern Lovers. I can't remember Roadrunner right now, but yeah, he's a famous nylon string player. Of course, Willie Nelson. You heard me play some Willie Nelson up at the top. I gotta learn the other half of that solo and everything else he ever did. Uh, if you like Wes Anderson as much as I do, um, the Life Aquatic soundtrack, all the Bowie songs that Sue George, the Portuguese artist, does. Wish I had, yeah. I wish I was in Team Zissou. Of course, uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim and all the um, Brazilian, uh, and yeah, the Brazilian bossa nova stuff he does on that. I'm not, okay, I'll butcher Girl from Ipanema again. I can't believe I don't remember one note samba or or some of the other ones right now, but hey, you know, there's only so much room in old Duder's, in old Duder's head. A lot of strands, a lot of ins and outs, a lot of what have yous. It's from a big Lebowski heads out there. Let's start a comment thread of big Lebowski quotes. Go! <laughs> I'll hop on it for sure. I can, I can speak entirely in quotes from that movie. Um, other things that, yeah, that I, I love to do um, on guitars, well, all guitars, but especially these, like just simple, like Carter style strumming stuff is great on this. Watch how old school this will sound. Let's see if I play it right. And 
that's usually, by the way, the stuff I tell my students to work on. You know, I'm not worried about... Get out of here with that. <laughs> I, you know, that's cool for sure, but I notice a lot of people aren't super hip with their... Just chill, clear, clean, open position playing. That's the good stuff. That's the stuff that like when you're playing with other people, yes, nobody's jaw is gonna drop, but you will have the, the knowledge that you are the one who is humbly holding it all together. That you're, you're like, I know I'm doing it right. And most of my guitar career has been spent doing that. Just being a good rhythm player. That's the stuff that gets you the gigs. Um, so for me now, thank you for sticking with me this long. Hey, um, let's talk a little bit more about this guitar specifically. This is, yeah, like I said, this is an old Goya that I've had like my whole life. This is the guitar that was in the attic in my grandparents' house in Amityville, Long Island, uh, where I lived till I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Around the corner from the horror house, we used to walk by it all the time. It's weird, that's a really rich neighborhood actually. Like it's a beautiful neighborhood um, on the canal. And there's something creepy about it though. There's something creepy about the, the canals at night. I still have kind of like a weird fear about it. Um, but yeah, this would be the one between this and my grandfather's little Casio keyboard. Those would be the things like, you know, I would open up the case and... This was the guy. This was the like the one that made me curious in the first place. Thanks, Uncle Mark. That's why I mentioned my Uncle Mark in last week's video too. My Uncle Mark Goldstein, probably definitely one of the my, my whole family is artists and musicians. So yeah, by the way, you can if you don't care about me and my life, I appreciate you sticking around for this long. Uh, now now Eric's just talking to you like you're a person um, that cares. Uh, my Uncle Mark, he. Uh, and my whole family, artists, musicians, dancers, not athletes, that's for damn sure. Um, thinkers, engineers, artists, dancers, but Uncle Mark, uh, I know he has one degree either from Johns Hopkins or Stanford in orchestral percussion, and then he has another one in artificial intelligence, and yeah, he was definitely, you know, seeing how much fun he had playing music and being musical definitely influenced me to be like, well, he seems like a happy guy, and Mark is a very happy guy. Um, uh, it made me kind of be like, well, that seems like a life that works. And uh, so it's funny, yeah, I teach music. My little sister is a music teacher in Oakland, California. Uh, and my brother plays music too, but he's an architect now. So yeah, music has always been in the family, and this one is, yeah, it's like, it, it really is true that a lot of my um, guitars and instruments that I keep around are, have connections to people in my life. Um, my Mustang, you know, that you see me play, that I've said before, that's my brother's guitar. He bought that and then left it to me when he, I guess he left it with me when he went to college. Yeah, he was like, I'm not playing it that much. Um, my silver tone, that, that belongs, you know, that was traded to me by my buddy Tony Toast, who's a screenwriter in LA now. Uh, so like a lot of my instruments have stories connected to people. And yeah, this one for sure, you know, yeah, is a big connection with this. And that's also why I play a steel string Goya, because I knew how good these are. You can still find these, by the way, for not too much money. Um, yeah, we'll stop rambling for today. I think I, oh wait, no, there's one more point I want to make. The rules of gear trading. Because I'm a gear purchase enabler, I, I want to um, lay down this rule. Don't get rid of anything that's like vintage and you got for a price that you can't get again. That's my one rule. I'm like, yeah, if it's just like a regular thing, a pedal that you don't care about, or kind of a recent guitar or amp that you're like, eh, didn't bounce, you go ahead, get rid of that. That's, that's no big deal. But if you got a good deal on something rare or vintage, keep it. Because mark my words as someone who's done it dozens of times by now, um, you, you, there will come a moment where you're like, oh, why did I do that? 
why did I get rid of that thing? I really wish I had it now. And now you, then you'll go online and be like, oh my god, they're like three times the cost. Now I can't. Roland Space Echo, I used to have one of those. Uh, Fender Pro Reverb, 1976. Uh, 78 Gold Top Deluxe, 68 Coronado 2. Why, Eric? Why? Why? I guess to get out of credit card debt. All right, well, that was a good reason. Um, side note, if you're in credit card debt, got to pay that stuff down, man. Got to get out from under that debt. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks for uh, sticking around and enjoying my new hat. This is the first video I wore it. I feel a little self-conscious about it, but I have such a love-hate relationship with my hair at this point. I'm like, just put a hat on it.